Thanks for tuning in to Witch Wednesdays with Steph and Tara, where we share our knowledge as we chat about a new witchcraft topic every Wednesday morning. Welcome back to Witch Wednesdays. This is Steph. And this is Tara. And you are listening to episode 61, all about salt in witchcraft. Woohoo! So many uses, guys. Yes, salt is one of those things that we wanted to get a little more uh, particular with this year, uh, just like we did with altars, because there are a lot of uses for salt. We talk about it all the time. There's actually a few different kinds that have different energies and different uses associated with them. So we thought it would be good to sort of go over all of your options. So a big overview of a particular topic, basically the theme of this year. (laughs) So salt has been used for magical purposes for thousands of years, mostly for protection, cleansing, and healing. And There are many different magical traditions that call for the use of salt in spells and rituals. Uh, So it's not just Wicca based or anything like that. It's uh, across all kinds of different practices. Yeah. All kinds of different religions have also used salt for tons of stuff for thousands of years. So it's always been known as a very magical and valuable ingredient. So we wanted Mm -hmm. to look at some of the reasons that um, it is that way and some of the history behind the use of salt in general yes so how salt became prevalent in the first place it was actually pretty important in the grand scheme of human civilizations because Mm -hmm. in the early days prior to industrialization the process of harvesting salt was time consuming and very labor intensive which meant that salt was a very valuable commodity and only rich people could afford it yep The Romans actually paid their soldiers with salt because it was so important for things like food preservation, because obviously there were no refrigerators back then. That's a very modern invention. Yep. So they salted their meat to save it. (laughs) You had to salt everything if you wanted to preserve it. Mm -hmm. Um, And the word salary is actually has its root in the Latin word for salt. So it has been around for a very long time. Um, And in addition to being important and pricey in terms of materialistic human living, salt also began to find its way into the metaphysical and spiritual realm and appears several times in the Old Testament. Um, There's one um, very notable instance in the book of Genesis in which Lot's wife, um, who doesn't have a name of her own. She's not that important in the scheme of things, apparently, except for <laughs> uh, she turned into a pillar of salt after disobeying God's commands. So that, that's a pretty um, popular Bible passage. that <laughs> People know really well. Um, and in Eastern belief systems like uh, Buddhism or Shintoism, salt is used both as a purifier and to repel evil. Yes. So for altars, for those, a lot of Household altars have salt somewhere on them for both traditions. So salt has also been used in folk magic around the world. And there's a really interesting book from actually 1898 (laughs) um, by Robert Means Lawrence. And we'll um, put that up on our website so you can look it up if you like. It's called The Magic of the Horseshoe. And it is all about folk magic and it's super interesting to sort of see where a lot of these traditions come from because obviously horseshoes are also in there which we've also talked about in using in witchcraft as hanging above doorways and things so it goes into looking at all of these different um, folklore traditions which is a lot of fun good read and it specifically looks at some of the ways that salt is used in folk magic all over the world so just pulling out some fun Highlight ones to share with you. Uh, In parts of Germany, Normandy, and Scotland, salt is used in or around a butter churn to keep witches from souring the butter or harming the cow from which the cream was obtained. So So that's an anti-witch one, which um, shows up in Hocus Pocus. (laughs) into the salt protection circle to keep the witches away. I was going to say, it's actually pretty funny because it's still used in some rural farms around the barn, but if your cow gets into it, it can actually uh, 
harm them and their milk. So it's a two edged sword kind of. There are some Irish folk remedies that include the use of salt uh, combined with reciting the Lord's prayer to cure those who have been what's quote unquote called fairy struck. Yep. Um, there's a similar story that comes from Bavaria in Ukraine in which salt is used to determine if a child is bewitched. So lots of salt used in those practices, but those practices are actually based on the fact that people, we think likely, we don't know this for sure, but people likely confuse this bewitchment or replace with a fairy child with autism. People didn't understand what autism was. They thought that, you know, an autism can present later when your child is a toddler and um, they would say that their, their child has been bewitched or replaced with a different, different child. And it's very common with how um, parents perceive when autism starts in, in their child. Um, So that's, that salt was used for those different things, but obviously unlikely to be effective. Not against autism. No. (laughs) Uh, There were also Egyptian caravans that would set out on a journey across the desert. We would perform a ritual that involved burning salt on hot coals to ensure that evil spirits wouldn't get in the way of travelers. So used for many, many years. And there is a number of um, salt used in modern folk magic that is talked about in another interesting book by Vance Randolph. And it's called Ozark Magic and Folklore. Um, And these are probably ones that you are very familiar with. Like if someone spills salt at dinner, it means that a violent family quarrel is on the way Mm -hmm. and I think people always remember that the best piece of advice is that if you spill salt you should throw some of it over your shoulder left shoulder Um, it either brings good luck or keeps evil at bay depending on on what you believe but you know both (laughs) could be both so if you do spill salt at the dinner table um, try throwing it over your shoulder but I think a lot of people are familiar with that one yep and it was always the left shoulder to uh because that was the evil shoulder. So if you were trying to prevent evil, you threw it over your left shoulder to block the devil. Uh, another folklore tradition is that it is considered bad luck to send salt to someone because that can lead to a feud between the borrower and the lender. So if your neighbor asks for some salt, uh, but you are supposed to not lend it to them, um, first of all, but if you do, have to borrow yourself, borrow salt for somebody, the best way to pay it back is with sugar or molasses instead, which was really interesting. That is really interesting. <laughs> yeah. Um, and this is because the person borrowing it can use it as a magical link to curse you. So don't lend out salt to somebody that you think might curse you. Also, if someone's <laughs> asking you for some salt, that seems kind of weird to me. Like <laughs> <laughs> now it's not expensive and it's pretty prevalent. Like just get your own salt. Anyway. Uh, and in the Ozarks, which are here in the U.S., yes. it's a very popular Midwest destination. <laughs> it is. It's like a chain of lakes. It's like a, it's a thing to do People when you're in love college. To go hang the out with them. Go to the Ozarks. Yeah, I don't know how to, else to explain it, but um, there is a belief that you can detect the presence of witches with salt because witches don't eat much salt. So if somebody complains about food being too salty, um, she might be a witch. Yep. So go, go figure on that front. <laughs> so now that we got all some of those fun folklore things out of the way, uh, let us know which ones you're familiar with, or if you have any other to add to the list, let us know on Instagram. Yes. Then uh, let's get into the different types of salt. So there are a few variations. Um, specifically, the distinction is made for ones that you can use in cooking or that you're going to consume in general, yes. while um, the other ones are just for use magical in ritual work. work. Yes. Uh, magical work can be done with any kind of salt. So if you're in a pinch, you can substitute for one or the other if you don't have a particular type that we're about to talk about. Um, but some salts may be better suited for certain magical purposes based on what they can be mixed with so the most readily available and probably one that everyone's familiar with is just plain old white salt it can come as kosher salt coarse salt table salt um you can get it at the supermarket 
they're really affordable and you can usually get them on sale or value packs all over the place. And yes. it's probably the most useful. Um, it's like a, the all purpose salt for adding to spells, rituals, and then it can also be used in cooking. So it's probably the, the best one to start working with. I always um, have salt on hand. <laughs> it can be used for absorbing negativ- negativity, banishing, protection, and healing. So if you follow, if you are a patron, and I think it might be up by now, um, like we said, patrons get way early access, like months and months, uh, to our videos before they go up on YouTube. So this one might already be up on YouTube, but I did a home protection salt bowl, uh, and that it has white salt in it for the the base. Pur- purpose of protecting the home. <laughs> yep. Uh, next up is black salt. There are different types of black salt, but there's two main categories, non-consumption and for consumption. Don't get them confused. Uh, so it's not to be confused with black lava salt, which can be used for cooking. So black salt for magical workings uh, can be comprised of different things such as charcoal, salt, uh, cauldron scrapings, It has extra added energy because of the magical components added in. So it can break hexes and jinxes, banish unwanted people, remove negativity, and it can be used for protection. Pretty much all salt different ways can be used for protection. (laughs) Yes. And in that same video, I do use a little bit of black salt in there too. So you'll see both (laughs) options. There you go. And next up is the Himalayan salt. Um, Pink Himalayan salt is a rock salt from the Punjab area of Pakistan. It's most commonly used in cooking. It's very popular lately. Mm -hmm. Um, And it's also used as cooking slabs for preparing meats and vegetables and as the Himalayan salt lamps, which we've talked about. Yep. It is high in iron, magnesium, calcium, phosphorus, and chloride. And for magical purposes, it can be used like any other salt for cleansing, healing. Um, And particularly if it's infused with like that very pink color um, that is associated with sort of healing and and love and self-love and all of those things. Yep. Next up is sea salt. It can be used for spells and magic involving water, the oceans, rivers, lakes, marine life, mermaids, dolphins, etc. It has other additional uh, magical and cooking purposes. I prefer sea salt for cooking, straight cooking, um, rather than the more traditional table salt. I also have Himalayan salt that I use for both magic and cooking, but And the last option is colored salt. So many natural items will tint white salt. Mm -hmm. So you may see um, like purple salt that's been tinted with lavender or other purple flowers. You can use cayenne pepper to make red salt. These will have the energies associated with that color. And we covered all of the different colors in the Candle Magic episode in season one. So if you're curious what those colors correspond to, that's where you can find all that information. Yep. And lots of detail. (laughs) So how can you use salt for your magic and spells, which is what you're really here for? (laughs) Probably. (laughs) So of course, protecting your home um, is the most common and probably easiest way. I think doing like salt bowls and things are the easiest way to sort of dip your toes into witchcraft. If you haven't done a lot of spell work, it's a very Mm -hmm. good beginner one. It's very easy. Um, but there are lots of ways to use it. It doesn't have to just be a bowl. You can place it all around your home boundaries, in your yard, in just in like the corners of your home. Um, obviously not any place that a pet is going to get into it because too much salt is bad for all animals. So, Including humans, everyone. <laughs> yes, including, We're included in that animal. <laughs> including humans. But yes, the best way to keep pets out is to uh, place a s- small amount of salt into a dish and place it near the front door a back door or um, if you have a troublesome neighbor then put it on that side of the house like um, an adjoining wall if you're in a townhome or on a windowsill if you know the the neighbor is on that side of the house Um, and that will be the best way to sort of keep it secure (laughs) and also protect at the same time Uh, So it works by absorbing negativity. So Mm -hmm. um, it's kind of like the um, things that Bath and Body Works sells to filter out the air in your home or like an air wick or glade or things like that. Or Um, a charcoal bag. 
yeah, that uh, so they that say they absorb the odors in your home. This is the magic version of Equivalent. absorbing negativity. <laughs> absorbs all that negative energy but that means that you can't just leave it out forever (laughs) no you do want to replace it Um, it's often recommended to do it every moon cycle Mm -hmm. Uh, but whatever you feel you likely will know um, sort of feel like the shift and and change in the energy of your home because you want it to keep absorbing negativity so if it seems like it's not working it is definitely time to replace it and dispose of the old salt somewhere away from your property Yes. Um, you can throw it into running water or, you know, give it back to the earth, but as long as it's away from your home. And be careful where you return it to the earth, because just like animals, if there's too much earth in a plot of land, things won't grow. So don't put it in someone's garden or <laughs> things of that nature. The next purpose of, of salt in witchcraft is definitely for keeping people away. So there's a lot of folklore traditions that it keeps witches away. Yes, a but lot of that. <laughs> it, it definitely works for keeping just people in general away. Um, so if you have those, you know, troublesome neighbors that we mentioned, like they're making your <laughs> life difficult, you can definitely throw some salt their way. That may help. Um, and uh, as l- keeping any type of people away, of course. Um, but we do have a post on that on patreon of keeping neighbors away and specifically for getting troublesome neighbors to move and one of the steps or there's like a couple of different versions for spells that you can can try and one of them involves black salt oh. so if you do have neighbors that you'd like to move out like i do uh you can definitely check out that post that that's on patreon <laughs> um yeah you can throw salt at their front doorstep and um turn away but you can also if you can't get to their front doorstep outline your property um or like the part of the property that faces your neighbor um align that with salt to sort of just keep them away from you and it might be easier to do the side of your own property versus going to their front door where (laughs) you could be seen (laughs) yeah lots of people have cameras on their front door now so keep keep that in camera And also throwing salt into someone's footsteps can prevent them from returning. So if somebody comes to your door or something that you don't want them to come back as they, after they leave, throw some salt in their footprints. There you go. (laughs) Uh, It can also be used on altars and in ritual magic. Uh, As we've talked about before, salt represents the earth. So placing salt on your altar brings the element of earth to all your magical workings and um, kind of a blessing to your altar. By mixing salt and water, you can also consecrate your ritual and sacred space before magical workings. A lot of uh, Wiccan witches keep salt on their altar at all times, just so they have it ready to go um, and can do a ritual at any time. You can walk clockwise around your sacred space to begin the ritual or magical working and sprinkle with the salt water um, using your fingertips on the floor in that circle. Be careful, depending on your flooring. Um, I have hardwood floors, so if I sprinkle it with too much salt water, there's going to be a permanent circle. So, And the last way uh, is to infuse salt into your spell work just to give it an added boost or emphasis. Uh, You can use it with other herbs or ingredients for spell bottles and altars and things like that. Rather than having the salt the main focus, it can just be a part of your spell as an added ingredient just to give everything a little extra boost. So some options for that are making a witch's bottle, which we've mentioned witches bottles before it can be used in as an ingredient in there for protection um it is often left as an part of an offering to the gods and it can be used of course in house cleansing ceremonies there are many ways to cleanse houses we went over that um and you can use salt along with any of the other methods that we talked about and you can also perform um self-dedication rituals if you are not in a coven because Mm -hmm. a lot of covens have their own all covens have their own um, initiation very specific rules and yeah and they have um, (laughs) very specific dedications and initiations and they may or may not involve salt Uh, it depends on the coven (laughs) it depends it depends on the coven um but if you want to do a dedication ritual we kind of talked about 
whether or not you need a witchcraft name and kind of dedicating yourself to the path if you want to. Some people like having dedication rituals. Some people just could not care less and it's, yep. it's fine either way. But yep. personal preference. incorporating salt into sort of your own self-dedication ritual is a good way to sort of let the world know like kind of what path that you are on and cleanse yourself of what came before. I was going to say salt's so versatile. A lot of people like to include it because it covers a lot of bases. It, it cleanses really you. It brings in the element of earth. It banishes evil. It, it, it incorporates so much that it's a very useful tool um, to use, especially yeah. in a self-dedication when it's just you and you might not want to bring out something to represent everything in the universe. <laughs> <laughs> very much so. Well, that is all we have to share with you on salt this week. But if you have any questions, definitely reach out through email or on Instagram and let us know and let us know which uh, version of salt you work with the most. Mine is definitely just white table salt because <laughs> it's cheap and easy to get. And um, I love black salt and I have a lot of uses for it, but the white salt just covers everything. I was going to say sea salt is what I probably use the most of, but I have it at all times all over my house. So it's just, it's part, it's easy to use and I like it a lot. Uh, I like the energy of it a little bit better. I even cook with it. So <laughs> if you have other uses for salt that we didn't mention though, we would also always be interested in knowing how you are using salt in your witchcraft or in the kitchen because we like kitchen stuff. <laughs> Definitely let us know. That is all we have for you this week. We will see you next week. Thanks for listening. Bye. Need even more witchcraft? Subscribe to our Patreon account for tons of exclusive bonus content and order supplies from our Etsy store. Reach out on Instagram at Witch Wednesdays Podcast or by email to witchwednesdays at gmail.com if you have any questions or comments. Find all these links and more at witchwednesdays.com.